Hi, my name is Tom Gardner. I'm with Mainline Information Systems and we're an HPE Platinum Partner. And today I want to talk to you about HPE's GreenLake consumption model. As HP just rolled out version 3.0 of the new GreenLake, I wanted to touch on a couple aspects that are rather unique. So um, let me start over here in this quadrant. Um, fundamentally, the new model is rather easy, especially by uh, contrast to any legacy model. So you basically, and I'm going to use storage in this example, um, but just know that GreenLake is available for HPE storage, compute, networking. And in the 2020 move forward mantra from HPE, they're moving to a model where they provide all their products as a service. And clearly that's a trend for the industry as a whole. And so GreenLake largely sits as the foundation for their effort to create everything as a service build for the capacity that you only use. Storage growth is off the chart, capacities are always evolving, and so step one, we're going to choose our storage. HP has several brands of storage, several products that you can uh, pick to choose to satisfy your block or file needs. Second, we're going to align the proper services to that storage. And just know that when you align the services, that HPE will manage the storage array, they will monitor the storage array, they will provide any upgrades to the storage array. So truly think of it as a service where it's all-inclusive experience. Then you're going to consume. And as you consume, this is all done on a metered basis. And given it's a metered basis, you're only going to pay on a monthly basis on what you've actually consumed. So the last part, capacity ahead of demand. And this is the four pillars that I want you to take away from you. Now let me move over here and talk about the example of a GreenLake con uh, consumption model versus a traditional CapEx model. And this is a pretty simple diagram and you may have seen this model before in other solutions, but fundamentally I'm going to speak to four tenants on this graph. One is a minimum commit, one is a metered actual capacity usage, one is what we would think of as a traditional CapEx model where you bought everything up front and then the other element of this uh, chart is really the buffer. So let's start with the CapEx traditional model where this being capacity on this plane and on this plane we're talking about time. You can make this a three-year window or a five-year window or two, whatever the time element you want but just know this is over time and all of this demonstrates some measure of growth. And to be very candid, GreenLake is best suited for companies that have some projected growth. Um, so what we would see in a normal CapEx environment is we'd follow this black line. This black line has some stair steps in it. This capacity right here represents whatever was forecasted for a period of time, three or five years. And I've tried to associate this rack, if you'll bear with my artwork, but this rack is showing at full capacity. And that's basically what you're buying on day one um, in a CapEx model. It's cash up front, capacity up front, very traditional procurement method. So we, if we look at the traditional CapEx line, periodically we're going to see an inflex where more capacity is needed over time. Outage, the average inflection point to add capacity is something on the order of 136 days from the beginning of sizing the new requirement, so on and so forth, to actually procuring, installed, and actually putting the storage in this instance in place. So you need to give some thought to those inflection points. Now, let me go to the red line, which I've drawn here, and again, non-scientific, but this represents your actual capacity over this same period of time. And the red line, as you see, would start with a sizing representative of what you actually need on day one. So this might be the capacity that you have installed today plus 10% that you know you're going to use in the next six months, and that's what the red line. So let's call this point A, and let's call this rack A. And you can see in the traditional CapEx model, you're going to pay for a full rack on day one, and here we're only asking that you pay for and consume what you're really going to use, and we're going to layer in this blue area which is the buffer. And I tried to draw the buffer always above the red line of what you're actually metered and using 
So there's always this extra capacity that with a few clicks and a few change orders, again, this is provided as a service. So there'll be a scope of work associated with it. And with the scope of work to make an edit, all we need is a change order. And then we turn on more capacity. And as that buffer is needed to be increased, because at some inflection point, I'll just pick something like right here, let's call this B, this point in time, this is what your array would look like. You would have now these two uh, rows turned on and you would have a more buffer above and beyond those. A couple takeaways from this, non-scientific, but it demonstrates the fundamentals of how you might save cash flow. This green area that I've highlighted represents savings. From day one, you have immediate cost savings. However, keep in mind, this is all relatively subjective. And if I made the original purchase line go further and the growth flatter, these variables would all play out slightly differently. When you talk about consumption models, there's a, um, a quick thought process that takes you to leasing. And this is not a lease. This is a service-based um, SOW or scope of work that you make change orders against and you only pay for what you consume. So now I'm gonna move back over here to the Green Lake Central. Um, but fundamentally, Green Lake Central is uh, a new unified dashboard that's not only gonna allow you to manage your on-prem hybrid IT environment that is uh, built out of HP products, but also allow you to manage your cloud relationships that are off-prem. And that's all gonna be unified in a single uh, pane of glass dashboard. Additionally, you're going to now be able to capture consumption analytics, um, capacities and usage, and not only from the GreenLake environment that you have on-prem, but also these other cloud relationships. So you'll be able to start to assimilate associated capacities, costs, usage trends, and the like. And then fast provisioning. Inside the GreenLake Central dashboard, you're gonna be able to provision new assets rather quickly. Again, layering into the buffer aspect that I spoke to before. And then the biggest piece, maybe to some, is this continuance com uh, continuous compliance. And a lot, there's, there's been a trend to uh, move to and move from the cloud over the years. Um, there's some measure of companies pulling back. And I think security being maybe one of the leading uh, aspects or challenges that they're realizing. But the other is compliance. So there's about 1,500 tools in total that are embedded in this compliance engine that'll help you keep and monitor um, everything that you need for compliance. So there you have it, the new HPE GreenLake 3.0. Just so you know, this is new 3.0. HP's capacity on demand model or flex capacity has been around for nine years. They have over $3 billion under contract. So there's nothing really new about the conceptual model. This has just reached a new part of the hype curve where they've cleaned up some of the challenges, created a lower cost entry point, made it easy and groomed it, so to speak, so that it plays much like as a service for all the consumers. As you can see, this is a little subjective, but a visual on a minimum commit that you'd have to pay, build and meet on a, against a metered capacity, and there's an installed buffer. Uh, and then it's coming with uh, GreenLake Central. So a lot of things to look at. Thank you for giving me some time today, and hopefully this proves to be something that you can take advantage of.